He's only an inch and a half okay. shorter, a one, right, re a one inch reach deficit. It's as okay. close to equal he as right he's here. had for it's a long okay. time. It is indeed, right but at the same here. time, it's Tim, okay. it's making that pay against this fella, Klitschko. He's just so skillful, it's very, very difficult to actually break that distance down. The referee, you've been talking about we need a strong one here today. Uh, Tony Weeks, the man in charge, refereed five world title fights this year. He's been involved with some of the greatest names of the last 15, 20 years. Pacquiao, De La Hoya, Mayweather, Cotto. He's taken charge, though, of just one previous heavyweight title fight. That was Klitschko against Hasim Ratman back in December of 2008. And he is certainly experienced enough. Kulev's got to push the envelope a bit here with the referee. But immediately, Klitschko is into hold, and this is what Pulev said he isn't going to be able to do. He isn't going to get in there, going to be able to get in there and dominate it. Well, like I said, back in the studio, you, we've got to have a strong referee. Look, this is what Klitschko does straight away. He holds. We need a referee to say, right, no holding. Come on, let's get on with it. And I think Pulev recognizes that. that that's better. What a jab! A lovely jab there from Pulev and a good right hand. Great start. Great start. And you look back to the two previous fights he had against the two giants, Istinov and Dimitrenko. It wasn't a right hand that put either of those two down. It was his left hand that did it. And that just shows you how much he's got in terms of power in that left hand. Well, he's, he's in against a taller. Um, opponent to what he's normally used to. Klitschko is here in Pulev. Pulev's six foot four, he's tall, got good range, got a good jab himself, and he's making it pay Tim early on. Oh! Pulev is down, and this could be it inside the first round. Left up. Stunned, absolutely stunned. He is all over it. He is out on his feet here. He's smiling at the referee. Is he going to be able to survive this? The crowd are going berserk. He's over and done. That is it. Surely he isn't going to survive. He is all over no, the place. The referee has got to finish this. The call with the left foot. There is counting to eight. He's looking to his eyes. He's he, happy. He said but he's vulnerable. vulnerable. He is vulnerable. He's looking to land the steel hammer of a right hand again. The eyes are burying him deep into Kulev. Is he going to do it again here? This is going to take something well, from him to recover well, from this. Klitschko's doing the wrong tactic here. He wants to find a bit more range. He's still not recovered, Kulev isn't. And Klitschko, what he should be doing, he should be trying to step him back, creating a little bit of space and trying to work that right hand. But it's the left hook that's done all the damage, not the right hand. It's been the left hook from Klitschko. This time, it is Kulev that is digging in and holding on here. Well, his last 11 fights, he has outlanded his opposition by 1,525 punches to 443. It isn't about when Klitschko loses fights, he barely loses a round. This is going to take something sensational here. You can see there's still a bit of wobble in the legs of Pulev here. One more big shot and it's surely going to be over. Is he going to let him off the hook? He's only got 14 seconds to go here. It was a good start from Pulev. Started well with a straight, stiff jab. But as the round's gone on, Klitschko has started to get back into it. How did he ever survive that, Richie? Yeah, incredible. We were talking about Pulev landing a good shot. And the champion... Finds a way, a tremendous left up that hit the target and put his man down. There's Jonathan Banks now giving the instructions to Klitschko. Well, Banks actually has said on the evening, he said, I believe he said that uh, Klitschko now understands what fight fans really want to see and expect from a heavyweight champion of the world, and that is it. Yeah, that's the one. Gets caught himself early on, but comes in with the left up. This is the second knockdown, but there's nothing in that. That's just off balance and throwing him to the floor. So the referee was quite right in what he said. But here, look, this is long-range work. Look at the right hand, just missing the target. But that's an example of what he's like at range. Very strong indeed, mid-long range. What a first round. Well, this isn't a staring contest. This is boxing, that's what I'm say. Right, where fans want to see explosive knockouts. And if you can't get it, Please show them you're in there trying to get it. 
We expect to see him let his hands go with more regularity, and we've seen that inside the first round. He just doesn't look as if he's got the capability to stand up to anything sustained here, Pulev. But, Tim, this is the first time in many, many fights when, when Klitschko has come up against someone who's got a very, very good jab. Now, what Pulev is doing here is tremendous with that left hand because it's making Klitschko think he hasn't been caught with a left hand, left jab like that in many a fight here. Something about the Knights in Hamburg, he's had seven career fights here. And they have tended to go long. That went 12 rounds, there's another right hand. And again, there's a slight look of amusement there as it lands. You cannot afford to stay at range with Klitschko. He's holding his feet here a little bit, Pulev. He's looking for that left jab, you see. But at the same time, he keeps getting caught with the long, straight right hand. So he's got to try and avoid that. He's got to try and slip that shot. He does have a tendency to fight at a very mild to slow pace. There's Pulev. The number of punches he throws per round as has been calculated over the recent fights against the likes of Dimitrenko. All very much under the, the heavyweight average, which is about 45 punches a round. He falls well below that, and he does have a tendency, as we have seen, to get hit by power shots from the opposition. Dimitrenko landed a fair few. Thompson landed 40% of his. If you get get on the end of 40% of the power shots of Klitschko, you're not going to last very long. I have seen him in other fights, though, Tim, where he can be busy. He can... He's got good movement, has Pulev. He's playing a waiting game here. He's got to watch out for the long straight right hand again. But he's looking to land that left hand. He knows he's had success with it. And that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to land that jab. He's got to bring probably his right hand through as well. Because the single shot's not going to be enough. And at the same time, he must keep that right hand up a little bit more to his chin. Because Klitschko is looking to land that long left up. With the impressive part of the most recent fights that Klitschko's had has been the, the work rate, the amount of shots he's landed has all significantly increased in the last uh, couple of years and the fights that he's had with Vat Pianetta and Leah Pai. So he's, it's almost like he's getting busier. But it is rare you will find anybody as focused in their objectives of, the, of their sport as this guy here. End of the second round. Brettel stuff. Atmosphere remains. It is the Pulev support, though, which has gone a little bit quiet. The Big Fight. Sponsored by 666bet.com. Ivan Pulev, who has his brother in the part of his corner team, Turvel. He fights as an amateur, looking to fight in the Olympic Games. His brother's actually been over and sparred at the Team GB. A couple of good spars with a heavyweight up there, Warren Baster. And he's, he's handy himself, Pune's brother, very good indeed. He does like to talk about records or anything approaching Larry Holmes or Joe Lou, which everybody else has been doing is the in the back of his mind though depending on whose interviews you read Bernard Hopkins is a man that spurs him on he wants to keep his health he's got absolutely no plans of doing anything other than fighting on for another three to four years that is his plan Klitschko, unless the plan is changed for him this has been an amazing recovery, this, hasn't it, by Pulev? Indeed, but it's, it's quite clever tactics what Pulev's doing. He's, he's sitting on the outside and waiting. What he's trying to do is draw Klitschko's lead, make him either fall short or he'll try and slip it. Then he comes back with his own jab. And what he's trying to do is get Klitschko to overreach. By overreaching, he may fall short, and that's when an opening can occur for Pulev. So he's playing a crafty game here, Pulev. 
the problem he's got is a long left hook from Klitschko and also the straight right hand. So he has to adjust his feet to probably miss those shots or a bit of head movement to slip them. But clever tactics on the outside. Most people would have expected him to try and get close up to Klitschko. Good to see the, the referee getting very quick to break these clinches up as well. Oh, look at that right hand and he's wobbling again. There you go, that's what I was talking about, when you're on the outside, you're waiting like that, gets caught with a thunderbolt of a shot. Well, they said he's trying to wow the American fans, or watch this, there's the left hook and he's down. And Pulev, is he going to recover? He's up very quickly again here. The referee looking into his eyes, he says he's okay. He survived it in the first round, can he do it again here? Klitschko showing what a formidable opponent he is. Not only has he got that straight right hand, right he's got hand pummeling him again. Well. There's the left hook. He's got him on the ropes. He's very near to a conclusion here, Pulev. But he's still there. Mark appearing underneath the left eye of the Pulev. Interesting, it was noted Klitschko, you see, rarely going to the, the body of uh, of Pule, that ready to get the body of anybody said because he doesn't like to leave his chin exposed he doesn't want them to take any risks i said that before he doesn't take a lot of risks does klitschko that's why when they get up close he just holds and just nullifies the work on the inside from his opponent great round again from klitschko 10 8 10 7 maybe well, everybody on their feet inside the arena Richie, there was that uh, great quote about Ernie Sheamus when they said he could punch you in the neck and he could break your ankle. It, it can't be that much less here when he lands. It just shows you how dangerous Klitschko is. He has tremendous boxing skills with that long straight right hand especially, but also in this contest, that long left hook. He came close to landing a right hand of his own there, Pulev. Remarkable powers of re recuperation here. And what they've done here, Tim, the Pulev camp, they've literally said to Pulev, look, you're not going to work on the inside because he holds too often and he gets away with it from the referee. So you've got to stay at range and he's trying to work his jab and he's having a bit of success, Pulev. It's just that he's been caught with some tremendous shots with the accuracy and the power from Klitschko tonight. Yeah, the message in that corner, don't settle, don't make excuses. And when you get out of here, don't have any regrets. That is what got him up. always been plenty of talk about the the chin of Klitschko. It was, it was Carl Froch, you see, wasn't it? The best type of chin is the one that doesn't get hit. And his rarely, if ever, gets hit. Leaning in, had to travel that right hand. Easy to get out of the way, uh, Klitschko. Billy was talking about the, the key to this fight, and he said it is footwork. It was, it was highlighted that Pulev often just tracks his opponent's footwork. Well, Pulev here, occasionally just falling short with his punches. He's got to move his feet a little bit quicker and closer into range, and then he'll start to connect with the right hand. He's thrown a couple of good one-twos in this round. There again, look, but he just falls short. He's just a fraction, two or three inches off the distance he needs to just get a little bit closer for that shot to connect what we are getting here though is the best fight the best opposition that we've seen in a ring in Klitschko for some time Just managing to slip that big right hand again, but the left hook goes in. Uh, is there a cut on the corner of that left eye of Pulev? See again, Klitschko working at range, staying centre ring. I'd like to see Pulev get caught again with the left hook because he's waiting, waiting too long, Tim. Holding his feet too long and gets caught. Got to quicken the feet up a little bit and try and push Klitschko back to the ropes. It's very rare you see Klitschko on those ropes because that's where he's going to be vulnerable. Yeah, the, if you look at the last guy that beat him.
part of the, the Klitschko preparation, which is something he always does on the eve of his fights. He puts a tape on a fat Brewster loss, and he watches it from start to finish. At the end of that, people said he had no chin, no stamina, no heart, no anything. He uses that, he says, as his major motivation. I'll never forget it, he said. I'm thankful to Brewster, and I will be until I go to my grave. It is what gives me the motivation. It is all about payback, and he is making Pulev get payback. But Pulev spins him and lands a left hook of his own. Yeah, it gets caught again, Pulev. I know I keep repeating myself, but he holds in his feet for too long. He's got to quicken up. Well, I am surprised as well with Pulev. There's no head movement. Although he's sitting back and he's trying to draw the shot and make, make Klitschko fall short, he must move his head. There must be head movement there. Trying to slip the punch and then come back with the counter. But he's still in here at round five. His testimony to his strength, mental strength as much as anything. He saw how cool he looked the time he arrived just a couple of hours ago. And he's carried that coolness into the ring and he refuses to get out of it and be put out of it. It is strange, like you said, Richie, because what was part of the, the Pulev makeup, part of his strength was the fact that he had good mobility and a reasonably good agility. But we haven't seen an awful lot of it. No, 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 no. And the referee is in quick to separate. as well and he isn't far away oh look at that left hand again and that is it surely Pulev is not going to get up from that he is out for the count what a left hook he is over and done and that is a stunning conclusion just when you thought that Pulev was on the brink maybe of catching him it is lights out for Pulev it's as, if, it's as if it fires him up a little bit. Pulev had a little bit of success there. Just was just short again a few inches of that right hand. The one-two combination. And then Klitschko delivers a perfect peach of a left hook round the guard. And we talked about Pulev's right hand. It wasn't close to his chin. It's not protecting the chin. Round it came. What a punch that was. He probably won't throw a better left hook than that. Tremendous shot. What a message that is uh, sent out. It's believed that he's signed a three-fight deal with HBO. There's Steven and Deontay Wilder uh, on the on the horizon. Of course, you've got Chegaev in the in the arena here tonight. The camera hasn't picked him up. But if he wanted to send out a message to the to the uh, the fans over in the States, he wants to get back over there, wants to make himself feel loved by boxing's number one supporting nation, then he had to do something like that, and he has delivered on everything Jonathan Banks said he was going to do. Yeah, the Americans will love this performance from Klitschko because it had everything, didn't it? He put his opponent down, but at the same time, his opponent was always in the fight and being quite dangerous. But we've seen from Klitschko, his precision and his timing was perfect tonight, and his power, sensational. The right hand, left hook especially. We always talk about Dr. Steelhammer with this right hand of his. Pulev there taking the applause from the crowd, but he was caught with the, one of the best left hooks you'll ever see. What a shot that was. Bang on the button, on the chin, down you go. Referee starts to count, but then thinks, that's it. This fella's not getting up, and that's the right decision. Sensational conclusion to what has been a dramatic night here in Hamburg. Kubrat Pulev, the man they used to call the big messy on account of his skills and technique, has been belittled here tonight. And when you look at it, there's, uh, there's Shannon He's Briggs. He's still having a go, Shannon. <laughs> he wants to get in there. He wants to have a go tonight, I think. You know, back over, he gets a lot of criticism. As we know, Klitschko, seven of the 17 defences he's had have been against unbeaten fighters. Ten of the 17 defences against fighters who had world championships going into the fight all were world champions. 
He's never ducked anybody, he's taken anybody on. How can anybody reasonably or feasibly argue that he isn't one of the greatest that there has been? Well, unfortunately, Tim, there hasn't been the the, the, the opponents in his division, like when Muhammad Ali yeah. fought and, and Larry Holmes fought, fought these guys, the Ken Nortons, the Joe Frazier's, the George Foremans, they made the division great, didn't they, back yeah. in those days? Yeah. Whereas Klitschko has been a victim of his own success in many ways because the, his style of boxing has meant that he's... Many people have said it's boring, but that was nothing about boring about this tonight. And he was in against a number one mandatory IBF challenger. And this was a very, very good fight indeed. He showed us the power, he showed us the speed and the skill against a very, in my opinion, a good opponent. So, so what about the people that say that it, it's... Uh, the measure of greatness isn't only about who you, who you beat, it's about who you're beaten by. And like you said, you go back to the era of, of Ken Norton, Joe Fraser, George Foreman, even, even Larry Holmes and who they want and were beaten against. And if you look down at the people who he, who he was beaten by, Bruce de Sanders, Ross, Ross Purity, they say, well, there you go. I mean, that, that says something about him as well. Well, Corey Sanders won a world title, didn't he? Yeah. So did, well, that's did that's Lamont, right, absolutely. That one, Bruce, the world champions. It's just that this fella, since his defeat, in 2004 against Brewster, he's really tightened up, and the great late Emmanuel Stewart, who spoke about this in the yeah, studio, yeah. how he's tightened him up, he's cut out all his mistakes, he's maximised what he's got, his height and his reach, and he's a tremendous boxer in terms of his technical ability, and people don't really get that. This fellow's not only got a lot of speed and a lot of power, but technically, he's very good, an Olympic champion in 1996, remember? So, yeah, he is the real deal. And I'm sure, in the back of his mind, he will be looking at that Joe Louis 25 defences, successful defences of... That's the record, isn't it? And that's what he'll probably want to achieve. Yeah, it is. 17th defence. He is drawing within touching distance of the Eastern assassin himself, Larry Holmes. It's ironic, isn't it, that you look at Larry Holmes and you look at Vladimir Klitschko and two of them feel that they've never really been appreciated. Larry Holmes always, always felt that. Uh, and the same can be said of, it, of, of Klitschko here. Uh, but of course, he's got a few years yet to go. He's only three and a half years to beat the record of, of Joey Lewis. He said, uh, I'm not obsessed with it. Uh, but if I stay healthy, then why not? And that's uh, quite right. And he is aware of the record of the, the 25. He said it, it is almost impossible to, to reach that number. But yeah, he's, he's on the road. He's, he's not going to be going anywhere for years, is he? I think, Tim, as well, because he still has a strong desire to box, a strong desire to train. This is why people like Bernard Hopkins is still in the game at 49. He still wants to get up in the morning and run, still wants to spar, still wants to go through the training programmes. And Klitschko is exactly the same. He enjoys the sport immensely. Just and while he's got that yeah. passion and desire, he will keep going. Once that goes, then you're finished as a boxer, no matter who you are. But it still runs strong through his veins. This this sort of sums up the, the man, doesn't it? After he lost against Le Mans Bruce, he met him actually in a restaurant in LA, and his manager, this is Bruce's manager, gave him a business card. And on it, on, on Brewster's business card, was a picture of Brewster knocking him out. And he kept the card for years. He got him to sign it after he knocked him out in the previous, uh, in, on, in the rematch. And he still keeps it in his gym bag to this very day. Here we go. Let's have a look at how it all concluded. Long left hook, round the, the right hand of Pulev, bang on the button. Centre ring, just dips his front leg and his head and then whips the shot around the corner. What a punch that what, was. What heavyweight in, in existence at the moment would have been able to actually withstand that? Well, Tim, I have to say Pulev, I thought, had, and had a good chin. I mean, he, the he end got comes up, at two minutes and yeah, yeah. 11 seconds of round number five. The winner by knockout victory and still heavyweight champion of the world. Dr. Steel Hammer, Vladimir Hitchcock. It's a changed man, this, uh, Richie. This isn't the man that they said. He isn't electrifying or explosive. He's slow poison. Well, this was a quick administration of that tonight. It was a sensational finish. He hasn't fought in the USA uh, since he beat Ibrahimov back in 2008, February 2008, at Madison Square Garden.
Uh, but you can be sure that this is going to be replayed and replayed on the on the networks that are showing us on ESPN, I think, in, in, the, in the USA. And they're going to drum up an awful, awful lot of interest in this. Yeah, I think so. I don't think we've overhyped it because this guy, uh, Pulev, is, as I say, he's a mandatory challenger at IBF. He's the number one. He's the best out there. He's 20-0 with 11 knockouts.